Hi, Gary Hoover here. I'm excited about entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial thinking. I think they're important in all aspects of society, in government, in nonprofit organizations, for profits, big enterprises, old enterprises, young enterprises, small enterprises, Asian, European, American, all types of enterprises, of people working together to accomplish something. Well, that's how I define an enterprise. And and, and I teach and preach entrepreneurial thinking. But one thing that really comes up is what is entrepreneurship? What is it all about? And I've seen people, um, uh, when I served as entrepreneur in residence uh, a year or so ago at the University of Texas Business School, the McCombs Business School, people would come into my office and they'd have different ideas about entrepreneurship. And a lot of times I think they were missing the point. One thing I'd see a lot is I'd say, why are you here? What is it you want to achieve in your life? First question. And they'd say, I want to get rich. And I'd say, that. I can't help you. Go down the hall somewhere else. You're in the wrong department. Because if all you want to do is follow some sort of formula, if I do A, B, and C, then I will make a good income. There are a lot easier ways to do that. <laughs> Not that they're real easy. You still got to work at them and be good at it. But if you go to law school and you get out of there, you get good grades, you work your butt off, whatever it takes to get the good grades, and you get a job with a big law firm, and you're in, uh, you're going to have a pretty stable future and a pre somewhat predictable future. It'll still be up to you how huge you make it, but, but you're going to die with money. You're going to get rich, uh, uh, certainly compared with the average American. I'm sure if you go to medical school, if you're going to make it through all that education, uh, you will. Um, even selling residential real estate, and I know there's a lot of people out there, it's an intensely competitive field, but still, if you say, I'm going to be the best expert in the world on houses in this neighborhood, and especially if you pick an affluent neighborhood where the houses sell for a lot more because the commission percentage is the same in a poor neighborhood as a rich neighborhood, you're probably going to do well. If you set out to become an entrepreneur because you want to get rich, you probably are not going to succeed. First of all, nobody can guarantee it. It's, it's really a matter of something, finding something you love to do and throwing yourself at it. And you'll find out if it works or not. And, and, and if you study all the great entrepreneurs, it's very rare that they were in it for the money, almost like non-existent. So, and I'll hear people say the purpose of entrepreneurship is wealth creation. I agree with them if you define wealth very broadly not just financial money wealth, but very broadly. So, you know, wealth is not about money. Next thing, people back when I was at UT come into my office and they think it's about technology. They see the stories about Google and all that jazz and they say, oh, I got this great invention. I got this new piece of software. I got this new gadget and, and, and I got this patent and it's just the greatest thing on earth and, 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 uh, and now uh, I, I want to I be an entrepreneur with it. And if you study the great, even the great technology leaders like the Watsons that built IBM, they were not obsessed with having the fastest, best technology. They were obsessed with what served people the best. And they used technology towards that end. And so many times, the young technologists come to see me, and they got this great thing that they think is exciting. They haven't talked to any customers. They haven't been out there in the real world uh, uh, learning how do customers think and what are they looking for. So it isn't about technology. That's not the core. You may need money and use money in an enterprise. You may need technology and use technology, and you probably will in an enterprise. That's not the guts of it. The third thing, people come in sometimes, or I talk to economic development people and stuff, think it's about creating jobs. So we'll, we'll have a lot of entrepreneurs so we can create a lot of jobs in society. And we want to find people that want to create a lot of jobs. Wrong. An, a great entrepreneur cry, tries to create as few jobs as are required to get the job done. When all the big airlines after September 11th, all but one, were laying off people, like five, 10,000 people at a time after September 11th, 2001, Herb Kelleher, Southwest Airlines, didn't lay off anybody. And they said, why? why? What's going on? Why are you different? He said, we never hired all those excess people in the first place. A key tenet of entrepreneurial thinking is not to waste resources, to be lean and mean and highly productive and very innovative. So if you can do a job with five people and your competitors, it takes eight people, you want to be that one with the five people. Now you've got to hire enough people to get the job done. And companies like Microsoft and Apple have created thousands of jobs. I, I was on the board of directors of a company called Whole Foods Market. They've created tens of thousands of jobs, but not one more job than they needed to create. And, and you don't want to get in that mindset of wanting to build empires and taking great pride in, 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 in uh, how, how many extra jobs. Uh, jobs play a role 
and great entrepreneurs do create jobs. That's not why they were in it. There's only one valid reason for the creation of an enterprise, and that is to serve people. To find a need or a want that people have, and they may not always understand it. In other words, uh, Henry Ford, he said, if I'd given the customers what they wanted, I would have given them a faster horse. And when I created the, the, the first book superstore uh, uh, chain, nobody was sitting around saying, oh, we need great big bookstores. We need bookstores with more books in them than B. Dalton and Walden Books, who were the two old leaders. But I saw that they loved Toys R Us, which had the same business idea, apply to toys, and they loved big stores and low price. said, I think that'll work in the book business. So sometimes you've got to really use your imagination figure out what they really want. But it's about serving people. And if I were to come up with a single definition for entrepreneurship, I would say it's achieving satisfaction by serving others innovatively, with innovation. Now, now, key thing in there is the achieving satisfaction. Because you've got to love it too. You've got to get great joy out of it. It's just too hard to work not to. I've got friends spent their whole life in public service or whatever you want to call it. But like, oh, I'll lay down in front of the, the bus for everybody. I'll do whatever you need. I'm totally selfless. Most of those people by my age are not very happy because they haven't given themselves anything. At the same time, my friends whose lives have all been about themselves and how big their car is and how big their house is and all that jazz. And there's nothing wrong with big cars and big houses. But when it becomes the central tenet of your life, those people are not very happy either. And a lot of them have got ex-wives and ex-husbands and kids they don't know. No. Successful entrepreneurship is about serving yourself and serving other people at the same time and finding that sweet spot where your passions and your interests intersect with the real needs and real wants of real people. That's what entrepreneurship is all about. This is Gary Hoover, and I'll see you later.